Hello, welcome back to Tiffster's UX channel. I'm your host, Tiffany. I'm here to help you figure out if UX is the right path for you. On today's episode, we're going to be breaking down tech terminologies for newbies. Listen, on my first week of as a UX researcher, do you know where I struggle the most? Not how to apply f- some UX research methodologies, not getting familiar with the team, not getting familiar with the product, but getting familiar with the tech jargon that everyone uses non-stop without thinking with no consideration for those who are new to this field listen a quick psychology lesson here people are more attracted to things that they're familiar with so even if you're talking about the same stuff when you speak their language that's going to resonate differently from if you're speaking your language so i'm going to walk you through some of the super fundamental tech terms that might be helpful for those of you who are starting off in ux research role as well as those who are newly interviewed for UX research jobs. Sprinkle these tech terms here and there. That helps you sound like you know your stuff. First period is the basics, the super basic terms. First is product. This is probably the most elementary vocabulary. Product no longer refers to things that you would buy. It refers to any type of software, hardware, item, facility, or services that provide value to your customers. Software is a computer program that runs a device. If you worked on a software product at Apple, you'd be working on something like iTunes or iMessage. On the other hand, hardware is the actual physical tool or equipment. So if you worked on a hardware product at Apple, you'd be working on things like iPhone or iPad. Period number two is relationships. First one is super important, the stakeholder. Stakeholder refers to individuals who have vested interests in your product. They are also the key decision makers and help in the proper implementation of a product or new business ideas. If you think of stakeholders, they're mainly divided into PMs, product manager, engineer, developers basically, or UX counterparts like designer and writers. Depending on the type of product that you are on, your key decision makers may involve marketing or strategy team. So going more into um, the major stakeholders that you're likely going to interact with, first one is PM, the product manager. PMs are the member of a product team tracks how the work is being delivered. They track deadlines and they monitor the budgets. Eng, a shortened version for engineering, but they are divided into front-end and back-end engineer. Those are going to be the people who code our ideas so that it becomes a reality. QA engineers are quality assurance engineers that has responsibilities of testing a product, reporting to developers or designers what needs to be changed or fixed or um, improved. QA engineers are kind of like UX researchers on the evaluative side in that you know, you're kind of testing out if, if there's any kind of errors throughout the implementation of a new idea that needs to be fixed. Period number three, uh, broader product terminologies, design thinking. Design thinking, uh, you're going to come across this term a lot. It is a, an iterative and non-linear process, uh, which contains five different phases. First thing is to empathize with your users. Second is to define the problem spaces. Third is to ideate and brainstorm on ideas and solutions. And then fourth is prototyping and kind of making like mock versions of that idea. And then number five is to test it out and validate if those prototype or that um, idea that is mocked up makes sense. An example of how I might use design thinking terminology is I like to apply design thinking in my design process by ensuring that I foundationally understand the user and their needs and generate ideas with the team collaboratively and testing out the news of new designs with our users. Another com- common term is design system. A design system is a collection of reusable components guided by clear state that can be assembled together to build any number of applications. So an example of this is I believe in creating thoughtful deliberate interface design systems because in order to quickly iterate with confidence, design teams need access to a single source of truth that allows for scalable UI um, language and streamlined UX guidelines. So design systems are created because let's say I come in um, as a new designer and create this button that has like a a light purple and has a certain font. 
Um, design system allows designers to utilize like the same language in the design sense and make sure that they are consistent across. Another one is accessibility. Accessibility is a practice of making your website usable by as many people as possible, um, including those with disability. It uses a balanced color scheme, alternative keyboard control, special page layout to help people with disability use the product and be able to navigate your product. Next, and the last term for this theory is information architecture. Information architecture, um, some people call it IA uh, for short, is the process of organizing information, which includes structure, design, layout, and navigation. It allows users to find and manage the information that they need. So for example, information architecture determines the placement of elements on a page, their navigation, and the relationship between pages so that it's easy to navigate basically. Fourth period is ways of working together. So I'm going to go into a little bit, a few different um, systems or models that different teams follow to develop a product together. First one is waterfall. In software development, a waterfall model is when um, each phase must be completed before the next phase can begin. This is well known as the older way of working. A newer model that most software companies today use is the agile model. Agile development is incremental and it's an iterative software development. So it focuses on keeping code simple and testing as often as possible and delivering functional parts of the application uh, as soon as they are ready. We say iterative a lot just because like we're following the agile model and we want to make sure we're building like little by little and testing those out as much as possible instead of developing one page to the fullest until going to the next page. So when we say iterative development, it is a way of breaking down software uh, development into smaller pieces rather than a dark jargon, more so like a commonly used term, but Scrappy is working very quickly and um, agile without trying to perfect anything. An example of a Scrappy work is if our team has like really tight timeline, maybe we don't have time to run like a full on one month UX research. Being Scrappy is doing what I can with what I got basically by trying to get as much you know, helpful insights as possible in a shorter period of time, which may involve um, talking to fewer participants in a study, but making sure that you know we're working with what we got rather than trying to perfect a research study and making sure it's as perfect as possible. Last term for this period is sprint and an agile software development. Sprint is a spe specified period of time within which an assignment must be completed. Sprint can last anywhere from like one to three weeks, depending on the business. But in design, when we say sprint, a design sprint is a unique like five day process of testing ideas, brainstorming ideas together, solving um, big problems by prototyping and, and testing ideas with others within that five period of timeline. I had to come back inside for the fifth period because it is burning outside in SoCal. For the fifth period, the topic is product solution. One very important terminology that you're going to use a lot is what's called MVP, which is short for minimum viable product. MVPs refer to super basic set of functions with which we can launch a product to get started. Products are often launched as MVPs to quickly release and collect feedback, user feedback, and then more features are developed after getting a round of feedback. In the mindset of wanting to be a little bit more scrappy, iterative, and agile model, MVP is a really common solution that we put out before we perfect anything. Low hanging fruit is a common word we use to refer to really easy solutions we quickly implement and get a lot of value out of. POC is proof of concept. It is the process of demonstration of a, of a certain idea or verify its feasibility and value. So proof of concept usually is very scrappy and 
Um, what we do with proof of concept usually as a UX researcher is to bring this out into users and maybe collect um, feedback. Maybe we're doing concept testing, we're doing some type of usability testing, um, but we want to get feedback from users using this proof of concept. KPI is a key, per key performance indicators. It is a measurable value that demonstrates how effectively a company is achieving key business objectives. So for example, like a KPI for a e-commerce product could be its sales revenue or new incoming user but it's metric that we use to determine if our company is doing well or not Next period is design solutions. First term is wireframe. Wireframe is a low fidelity design image that clearly shows the main content group, information structure, basic visualization of the interaction between interface and the user. Wireframes are kind of like electronic version of the sketches. As UX researchers, if we have wireframes, we may be able to take it to our users and get some feedback, or we may be able to do some internal testing with the wireframe. Now, the second term is mock-up. It's a static representation of a product. You can't click on it or interact with it, but in essence, they represent a picture of what final product may look like. And then the most high fidelity version of it is, is prototype. Uh, prototype also has various varying levels of fidelity. Prototype is a detailed representation of final product that simulates the interaction between the user and the interface. It allows users to assess basic functionality of the product and our UX team to be able to test out the viability of a business idea. So um, like I said, there's varying uh, levels of fidelity. So, you know, we may not be able to click into everything, but basic functionality will be interactive and something that, you know, we as UX researchers like to go out and take in front of our users and do some evaluative testing with it. Fifth period is um, design elements. First is a landing page. If somebody saw uh, your app on Facebook as an advertisement, then you know they would click into it, and it's like the first page that they would um, they would land um, on your website. Breadcrumbs. Um, it's a navigation aid that tell users where they are on a website. ETA is a call to action. Um, it's pretty much like a like a button that calls to action. So if it says like learn more or um, sign up now, those are the CTAs. Um, whatever type of button that people can click into that calls for an action to our users. Okay, eighth period and the final period. The engineering world that we are all not familiar with, but it's okay. I'm just gonna walk you through some of the most basic terms. So what is a back-end development? The back-end is the engine room of a website or a hardware or whatever a product that may be. Back-end developers deal with what powers the site, powers the app and its core functionality by developing logic. Other hand, front end is what you see, what our users see and interact with. Front end developers usually create like visual interface. It, it creates like functional, visible, viewable interface and experience to our users. What is a bug? Bug is a problem causing a program to crash or produce a, an invalid output. Backlog is a list of all the work that is due to be completed, um, like a to-do list for for the team. The agile product backlog lists of priority uh, priority fit features. And product managers will be managing this backlog of items that need to be taken care of, like features that need to be taken care of. The higher they are up on the list, it's more high priority work. The lower they are on the list, they're low priority work that can wait a little bit. Well, that wraps up the lessons for today. Thanks for tuning in to the hill along eight periods of studying uh, on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Bye.